Hello and welcome to Let's Play Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. If you've watched my Let's Play of King's Quest VI, you may remember that I praised Jane Jensen's writing and considered that to be a major factor in why King's Quest VI stands so far above the other entries in the series. Well, after King's Quest VI, Jane Jensen went on to write her own game for Sierra, Gabriel Knight, a game set in modern-day New Orleans that explores the world of voodoo. Quite a departure from King's Quest, wouldn't you say? Why would I tell you what the game is about, when you can see for yourself? And of course, we will start with the introduction, which is rather baffling the first time. You see it? But anyway. Day one. I dreamt of blood upon the shore of eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black, as was her scented skin. You actually want to pay uh, attention to those poems, because they sometimes have clues 
as to what is going to happen or what you're supposed to do during a particular day. Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? Apparently not. I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. Alright. That was the uh, introduction. Gabriel's quite the charmer, as you can see. First thing I'm going to do... ...is turn the subtitles on. Yes, Sierra seems to have uh, learned that sometimes players do actually like to have text as well as uh, speech at the same time. Interestingly enough, this is the only Sierra game that I know of where you can separately switch off the narrator voice uh, separately from the uh, regular voices. The reason for that is, I think, because the narrator in this game is kind of unusual. Um, I like her, to be honest. Uh, but she does take some getting used to. She fits the game very well, but the, if you don't know what to expect, uh, it can be kind of a shock, especially if you're used to, you know, the Gary Owens or Bill Ratner style of narration from other Sierra games. And uh, another thing besides the good writing that this game has in common with Kings Cross 6 is good voice acting. Yes, um, they actually have professional voice actors in this game, and it's Tim Curry doing the voice of Gabriel Knight and doing a, uh, a, a Southern American accent, as you can hear. A Cajun accent, I, I think that's called. The uh, interface in this game is slightly unusual, for one thing because this is one of those games that is in Sierra's rather awkward in-between period. Uh, when they were producing games that were basically in VGA, but that had some high-resolution Super VGA elements to them. Like, the backgrounds is still VGA, and the sprites are VGA. The icons are high-resolution. There's a couple of high-resolution sprites on the desk here, so you can fairly easily see when something is supposed to be important, because if it's high-resolution, it's something you have to, have to manipulate. But it's also unusual because the icon system is uh, somewhat more elaborate than is normal in Sierra games. We've got walk, of course, look, ask, and talk. Uh, we'll see why those are different uh, quite soon. But instead of just one hand icon, we have pick up, open or close, manipulate, or push, or move, I think this is actually it. We also have got our inventory and the... Uh, tape recorder that Gabriel just picked up. Now you might be expecting that we're gonna have to use that at some point in the game, but not really. It actually is just a conversation log, so you can use it to uh, listen to any conversation you've had in the game again. But in this particular game, we do not need to actually put it somewhere and record something or what you might be expecting. 
Now let's uh, take a look around this place where we are. It's apparently St. George's Books, a bookstore that Gabriel is the owner on, of, um, owner of, and apparently it's not doing too well, financially speaking. St. George's Books could use some serious renovation, but Gabriel likes to think that the place has character. See, that's what I meant by saying that the uh, narrator voice is uh, quite unusual. The top shelf contains a set of German books that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Aha! Uh -huh. That shelf holds used copies of the Dime Strife series, secrets of unsolved ancient UFO mysteries and such. They just leap out the door. I'm sure. That shelf holds. They just. That shelf. They. Yeah. He has three shelves of that apparently. The top shelf contains books on animals, including snakes and other reptiles. Snakes? I'm sure that'll have no relevance to this uh, game whatsoever. That shelf contains historical references. Biographies of kings and queens, that sort of thing. That's nice. Actually, let's look at Gabriel. Handsome, isn't he? I'll have to take your word for it. And Grace, who seems to be uh, his assistant in this shop. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. And Gabriel seems to like looking at her. Actually, uh, Grace has a couple of other um, messages if you use some of the other icons on her. Like I haven't tried. Get it? Because this is the pick up icon. If wishes were ponies. Apparently manipulating Grace is hard to do. Move that wall of ice. Good luck. I don't even want to think about what you mean. I'm not entirely sure what I was intending to do with that anyway. Hmm. Well, let's see what else is here. More books. Under oh. the window are reference books. Dictionaries, foreign language dictionaries, quotation books and others. Gabriel borrows them often when he's writing. As it seems that Gabriel, besides being uh, the owner of a bookstore, also writes and is currently working on a book on voodoo. Um, there's a newspaper on the counter here. Today's newspaper is on the counter. I just bet we can read that. Times Picayune, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I don't really believe in uh, horoscopes. Interesting stuff about the murders, though. Well, we'll see what else we can do here in the next video.